In previous videos, we've learned about glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. We know glycolysis is when we take glucose, we do a bunch of chemical reactions, eventually converting it to pyruvate. Now pyruvate, we do one quick reaction. Now we have acetyl-CoA. Now acetyl-CoA can enter the Krebs cycle. So these two processes are referred to as central metabolism because they're at the center of nearly all metabolism. But why do we do glycolysis in the Krebs cycle? Why do nearly all cells go through central metabolism? Well, when we take glucose molecules to go through central metabolism, we create ATP and reduced cofactors. So that's good. We've created some ATP and we have these reduced cofactors. But these reduced cofactors can fuel the electron transfer chain to create more ATP. So this is why we do glycolysis in the Krebs cycle. That's why we go through central metabolism. Because when we go through central metabolism, we create ATP. And we know this ATP can fuel all the energetic processes we need for life. And we create this ATP through central metabolism. But something important to realize is we can also take peptides and proteins and essentially use these, these, these peptides and proteins to create compounds that can also enter central metabolism. So what do I mean? So let's say we have this peptide with, with these amino acid residues. What we can do is we can hydrolyze these peptide bonds to release their amino acids. And we know this is the generic structure of an amino acid. We have our center carbon, then we have our, carb our carboxyl group, then our amine group, and then our R group. And we know different amino acids have different R groups. Depending on what the R group is determines what kind of amino acid you have. But we know this is the gen generic structure of an amino acid. So let's say we happen to have these amino acids. Let's say we had a peptide, this, this polypeptide, and we hydrolyze these bonds, releasing these amino acids. And let's say these were the specific amino acids we have. So this is alanine. If we have this particular R group, this is alanine. So what's pretty neat is we can take this alanine and we can do quick modifications to create intermediates of central metabolism. So then it enters central metabolism and can be used to create ATP. So what do I mean? So let's say we have this alanine and let's say we do one quick modification. Instead of having this amine group, we deaminate it, replacing this amine group with a carbonyl group. So we take this alanine amino acid, do one quick modification. Now we have this compound. And you might notice this compound is pyruvate. This is pyruvate. So that's a way we can essentially take a protein, hydrolyze these bonds, really creating, releasing this particular alanine amino acid, and now we do quick modifications to create pyruvate, which can enter central metabolism, now be used to create ATP. So that's pretty interesting. And another example is let's say we, let's say we hydrolyze these bonds, release, creating this amino acid, this, this aspartate amino acid. Again, we can do, go similar, do a similar process where we get rid of this amine group, creating this carbon backbone. Now we have this carbon backbone, and you might notice this is oxaloacetate. So this can simply enter as oxaloacetate, and now can enter the Krebs cycle to create ATP. And the same thing with this amino acid. Maybe we hydrolyze a peptide bond releasing this amino acid, this glutamate amino acid. Again, we can deaminate it instead of an amine, we get this carbonyl group. Now we create this alpha ketoglutarate, which we know is an intermediate of the Krebs cycle. So now it enters the Krebs cycle and, be, and can be used to create ATP. But something important to realize is this is only used in desperate starvation conditions. Normally, these peptides are important. We need these proteins and peptides for enzymes and structural proteins. These are really important. We don't want to just very easily break down our proteins to create these amino acids to enter central metabolism to create ATP. Only in starvation conditions where we're desperate enough to use to sacrifice our, our peptides and proteins to create amino acids to enter central metabolism to create ATP. But again, so if you're interested, these are all the amino acids that can, that can be used to enter central metabolism. For example, we can take cysteine and serine, do modifications to modify these amino acids to create pyruvate, which can then enter central metabolism. Or maybe another example, maybe we take our, uh, tryptophan. We do quick modifications to create acetyl-CoA, which can enter central metabolism. So these are different examples of different amino acids, which we can do modifications to convert them into intermediates of central metabolism to enter central metabolism to create ATP. So that's a way we can essentially oxidize amino acids to reach our ATP needs. But what's pretty interesting is, yeah, we can, for example, take alanine, the amino acid alanine, do some modifications to create pyruvate to enter central metabolism. But we can go in the reverse direction. We can take intermediates of central metabolism, do modifications to them to create amino acids.
So now we're going in the reverse direction. Now we're essentially taking these intermediates to biosynthesize amino acids. And this is an example. We can take pyruvate, do quick modifications to create alanine, the amino acid alanine. So that's pretty interesting. We can biosynthesize amino acids. We can take glucose, go through central metabolism, and, and essentially biosynthesize certain amino acids. And again, if you're interested, these are the amino acids that can be made from central metabolism. And, and the truth is humans, we're limited. We can only do some of these processes to create certain amino acids, but other organisms like plants or bacteria, they can, they can take central metabolism to create other amino acids. And then, and then we eat that organism and then we get the amino acids. But again, for example, we can, we can take glucose, go through central metabolism, convert it to pyruvate, then acetylcholine, then go through central through the Krebs cycle, and maybe now we form oxaloacetate. So we can take oxaloacetate and now essentially do some modifications to create aspartate. Now, once aspartate is made, more modifications can be made to create other amino acids. Or maybe we do central metabolism, go through glycolysis and create this intermediate, which we can do modifications to create serine. And then from serine, we can create other amino acids. But so that's pretty interesting. That's a way we can biosynthesize these amino acids from intermediates of central metabolism. So again, I'm gonna focus on these particular amino acids. So we can take this intermediate to create serine and glycine. We can take oxaloacetate to create aspartate and, and alpha-ketoglutarate to create glutamate. But these are a few amino acids that we can biosynthesize. Our cells can biosynthesize these amino acids based on our needs, whether we need these amino acids. But not just that, we can also go through the pentose phosphate pathway. So in previous videos, we've talked about this pentose phosphate pathway, where we take this intermediate of glycolysis, do some modifications, and eventually we can create this ribose 5-phosphate. So now we can create this ribose 5-phosphate, which we know we can do some modifications to create this compound. So this, inter this product of the pentose phosphate pathway, we can do some intermediates to create this ribose sugar with these phosphate groups. Now what we can do, which is pretty interesting, is we can create this structure. From these amino acids that we created from central metabolism, we can do some quick modifications and use the atoms in these amino acids to create this structure. So again, if you're interested, these atoms came from aspartate, these atoms came from glutamate, and then, and then these atoms just simply came from bicarbonate. But the point is, we can biosynthesize the structure, which we can do modifications to create pyrimidines, the nucleic acids pyrimidines, for, for to create DNA and RNA. So that's pretty neat. We can take glucose, enter central metabolism, and from those intermediates of central metabolism, we can create the ribose to create this ribose structure through the pentose phosphate pathway, and we can create these amino acids from these intermediates and now we can biosynthesize these nucleic acids. So we can essentially, from glucose in our cell, essentially from glucose molecules, biosynthesize these, these nucleic acids for, to create DNA and RNA. And again, also similarly, again, we can go through the pencil phosphate pathway to create this ribose, but we can also create this structure where these atoms specifically came from glutamate, these atoms came from glycine, these atoms came from aspartate, and then these atoms came from bicarbonate, and then we also have enzymes that can add certain carbons. But the point is, we can take glucose, enter central metabolism, and, and create, and essentially from these intermediates of central metabolism, biosynthesize these nucleic acids. And this particular intermediate, we can do modifications to create the purines to create nucleic acids. So the point is, this central metabolism is really important. And from the central metabolism, we can biosynthesize amino acids, but we can also take amino acids to enter central metabolism to create ATP. And also from these intermediates of central metabolism, we can use these atoms to biosynthesize nucleic acids, which is pretty interesting.